In the WeBots robot simulator, it, it is the scene tree that defines the configuration of the entire simulated world. This includes robots, static objects, physics, and other graphic properties. It is structured as a nested tree of what are called nodes. And a node is a computational object that includes parameters and encapsulates relationships and parametric values about the world. In this video, I'll describe the essential nodes of a, one of our sample robots and help you get oriented to how these are structured. So I've opened uh, the development version of the uh, Pendulum 1-2 model, which is a under-actuated robot with an actuated, uh, actuated base and then two distal links that have just passive joints. And I'm not so concerned about the performance right now, but thinking about the kinematics of the bodies. So I'm going to walk down through the scene tree and time to describe the kinds of nodes and what things mean. So first we have over here in the scene tree, there's some, some general world properties that we're not going to worry about now. We're going to look at robot. This is the robot def fully defined in the scene tree as a set of nested nodes. So a robot is, notionally, it's a machine. It's the top level of a robot device. It has properties like the controller that runs it. Um, it has an implicit free joint that connects it to the world. So it, has, it starts with six degrees of freedom, which are um, described here as the translation vector and an axis angle representation of rotation, which locates it in the world. Um, the default physics in WeBots is for a free joint. It is possible to write up some physics plugin that can produce a true like fixed joint for the base joint. And we may do that if we need to, but for now it's simpler just to have a, a free joint as the base. So it's oriented toward having a mobile robot, even if it's essentially static. Let's see, a uh, couple other properties at the very top level here. First note is that it has a physics object. Um, this describes the sort of dynamic properties of the root node of the robot. In this example, the root node is the large blue uh, pedestal base, which is considered to be the root node or the base node of the robot. The other thing to see is there's a bounding object. One distinction that is made in the simulation is each uh, rigid body in the simulator has some you know, kinematic relationship that defines how the joint's connected to other bodies. It has a uh, and associated dynamic properties, like the physics properties of how that body moves, so an inertia matrix, uh, lo location to center of mass. It has a bounding object, which describes how it collides. It's a separate object, and the geometry can actually be somewhat different um, to keep collision checking efficient. And then last, it has a kind of graphic object, which is used for rendering. And in theory, the graphic object could be a lot more detailed to allow for sort of better visualization than the bounding object, which might be kept simple for efficiency. In this case, we're using simple geometric primitives so that the objects are the same. We're actually using the same object both for graphics as well as for the collision checking. Um, so that keeps things a little simpler when we're getting started. So one, one thing that shows up in a lot of these nodes, we're starting from the robot node, is there's a child node or children list, which can have multiple children each of which are somehow associated with the, the root node or the, the parent node. Um, the first thing to note is the first child is, a, is the shape itself that's going to describe that blue volume that is the, uh, the pedestal base object, the geometry of the root object. And one convention I see what I've created here is that I've actually put the, the underlying geometry, which is a box, um, inside of a transformation that, uh, that basically decouples its location from the coordinates of the parent body. The parent coordinates for the robot are basically a XY al aligned coordinates at the bottom center of the pedestal, so that when Z is zero, uh, it's right at ground height, and X and Y uh, robot coordinates are parallel to the ground plane. So that's a convenient representation, but the geometry of the box, as all these primitives, actually itself includes a uh, the shape geometry uh, places its origin instead at its uh, center of mass or its geometric center. So by taking the underlying box shape and wrapping it in a transformation, I have then some extra parameters to locate the box within the parent coordinates. So just to go into that in slight more detail, basically what we've got going on here, I've lost my pen, I apologize. <laughs> 
So if the parent coordinates, and we're only going to draw kind of in the xz plane here for convenience. So if I have some uh, pedestal base of the robot, the root coordinates for the um, for the for the root node, the the base node, are at the bottom center. But then there's some kind of like center coordinates for the uh, that that geometric object that is the blue cube, blue blue rectilinear solid, that are located in an offset within that body. And since it's mostly a graphic detail, although it's used to compute centers of mass and inertia, um, it, by wrapping it in the transform, I allow myself to position it within the larger co larger coordinates. Back to the simulator. So. Uh, so anyway, so that shows that the first child of the robot node is a uh, transform that itself wraps a shape. The shape is this concept that can have different sort of geometries. In this case, it wraps a, a, a box geometry, which is a, a geometric primitive that has some dimensions. And there's other properties in there that we're not going to worry about quite yet. The other thing to note here is this def. Basically, there's a def, which is a, a way of defining names for objects and nodes within the tree. In this case, we want to reuse the geometric object that is the, the blue solid, both as the graphic object as well as the collision object. So but in, when we define this transform, we give it a name base object, which is our choice. And then by you giving it a name, then when we later go to define the contact object or the collision object, the bounding object, we can apply a use to simply re-reference that same object. So that means that it's a, it's a pointer within the tree so that the one object that describes the geometry can get used for two purposes. And if it changes, the, the bounding object will automatically change. That's a structure we'll see in a number of places, um, mostly for any kind of reuse. In this model, it's primarily for that bounding object use. The second child of the robot is a hinge joint. And this is the start of the kinematic chain. So the hinge joint itself is a, is a child of the top level robot object. And it has a couple of properties and then also sort of uh, children of its own. The first property is a, a hinge joint parameters object, which defines the lo location of that joint with respect to the parent body. And again, in this case, the key is that the anchor is placed at z equals one. So this places the, the first joint axis uh, one meter above the ground plane. So going back to the paper for just a second, that means that there's some uh, joint axis defined up here, which is a one meter above the ground plane. And uh, it turns out the look, because of the nature of a hinge joint, the origin of that joint can be placed anywhere along the joint and get the same effect. It's really an axis in space is what matters. So it's oriented along the x axis, and it ha it's positioned one meter off of the ground plane. Um, well, one meter off the bottom of the of the first robot uh, object. Um, it can have other properties too related to the dynamics, um, specifically friction. Um, but we don't care about the friction here so much because the joint itself can also have a device attached to it, or actually several devices. In this case, the the two devices attached to it. Oops, back to the simulator. The two devices are, are the um, a position sensor and a rotational motor. So the motor is a representation of the actuator at the base pivot, and the position sensor is a way to sample the values, of the angles, and report them back to the controller. These, in, in the turn, have their own properties and, and control gains, uh, but that's not uh, relevant to the kinematics. That's just about more about the properties of the of the simulated robot hardware. Going back to the kinematics, um, so the endpoint object is the as a child object of the hinge object. And this is the upward body. This is the, the second link in this particular chain. Um, in this case, the link is, we're going to call it link one. It's the, it's the sort of large red mass, which is the first rotating link of the robot. The key here is it's, it has a, has a no type of solid. This is kind of a familiar formal C. There's a solid, which is a kind of abstract representation of a body that can include multiple geometric objects and defines the physics. And effectively, in this, the solid is very analogous to the original robot object. It doesn't have a, it's a sub, sub object, so it doesn't have a controller, but it itself has um, a location with respect to the parent body. It has a name. It has a, a physics object. It has a bounding object. So all those things are defining the abstract properties of the body 
um, which is in this case the red object. And then much like the robot, it has a, ge a specification of geometry. If we look in its children uh, list, the first object is once again a transform with a def and a name that defines within it uh, a shape that itself is a, another box, and that defines the red box. And once again, the red box has its own in origin, its geometric origin at the center of mass of the red box. The transform is used to locate that within the coordinates of, of that first link one. Um, so that define, that's how the chain gets built here, is that the hinge is parented to a body, and as a outward child has another body, which is termed a solid. Now, the solid has, um, OK, once again here, the solid has children, too. And the first uh, of its children is its own, I'm sorry, we already looked at the body. It has two hinge joint children. In this particular model, there are two passive freedoms that connect the smaller green links to the red link. So, and we'll only look at one of them. Look at the hinge joint one. And once again, like the previous uh, hinge joint, it's got a joint parameters that defines the location of uh, the joint axis within the uh, red body. And it has a device. In this case, it has just a position sensor, no motor, because it's a passive joint. And then within that, the has a another solid body. And this, this solid body now, if we look over here, is the abstract representation of the upper sort of third link, the upper green link. And you'll notice that the, the coordinates of that body are placed, uh, conventionally here it could be anywhere, but I'm placing them with the, the red x-axis along the joint axis, the passive joint axis, just for convenience. It makes it easier to interpret the vectors. So once again, the solid, is, this is the link to A solid, is the abstract body on the end of joint 2A, and uh, it has geometry, um, like once again, wrapped in a transform to locate that within the link. And then we reach the end of that particular chain. The, the, in the children list, it only has the geometry. There's no other further hinge joints. This is a place you could actually place another hinge joint and then continue the chain down this uh, to add more freedoms. Um, backing up a second, uh, if we go back now to link one, uh, it has a second hinge joint, and I'll just tell you that is uh, the link 2b, that is the, the lower green link, and is otherwise very similar to the upper one. It has an independent geometry because it's shaped slightly differently, and all the offsets are slightly different. So this tree is, right here in the tree, the full specification of the kinematics. And by looking down at the various translation vectors, the hinge joint, uh, anchor vectors and axis vectors. Uh, it fully describes the kinematics of, of, the, of the system. It's, not, uh, it's, it's uh, not especially minimal in the sense that there are, uh, is some redundancy here. and There's definitely uh, freedoms of choice in where the coordinate systems are placed, but it does fully describe the kinematics. The, uh, it mostly describes the dynamics in the sense that the physics objects are providing uh, mass, uh, specifically mass numbers. Because we provided bounding objects, the simulator is willing to assume that those bounding objects define the sort of spatial properties of each link, and then it will automatically compute the center of mass locations and the inertia matrices, which describe the rotational dynamics of each link. It is possible to explicitly specify those, and um, that certainly would be a more nuanced model, especially if you started using uh, bounding objects that didn't exactly correspond to the physical shape of the robot but instead corresponded to some simplified collision shape. The last comment about this is that uh, this is listed out in length here as a tree, although if you look at the predefined models from the simulator, uh, most of them only show some high-level parameters and none of the detail. This tree can be removed, you know, taken out of the text file and put into it what's called a protofile, which is a templated description of a system. And it does allow for some uh, procedural generation. There's a Lua engine and a, te and a templating engine that can be used to compute a lot of subsidiary properties from some top-level properties. And that is a way to build a parameterized model so that uh, one can either easily drop in a model or change a high-level parameter and have a, a number of associated uh, uh, dynamic properties and, and link properties change to go with it um, at the cost of setting that up. But to start with, um, the, 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 any proto-based robot can be re-expanded back out into a tree by making it a root node. Uh, 
And then once edited as, in the editor here as a tree, it can be sort of manually converted back into a, a procedural representation. And that's something we might try later. So just in summary, we basically covered a lot of, of WeBot-specific terminology, very WeBot-specific. Um, we have robot nodes, which are top-level nodes. They have hinge joint nodes, which describe connections between links. They have uh, their solid nodes, which described basically abstract uh, link bodies. There are shape nodes and geometry nodes and transform nodes, all used to construct the geometry within those solid bodies. And I think that's actually enough to do quite a bit. Um, it can be a little daunting to try to tunnel down. It can be, it's easy to lose your place in this tree. But if you keep those kind of general structures in mind, um, if you are careful enough as you proceed down through the tree, you can figure out where to find something. Um, clicking on some objects will highlight it in the graphics. It's a way to help visualize what you're looking at. And um, I think this will get us started on some kinematic modeling.